Time now for the Friend Zone, where we invite one of our friends from within the building here at Fox onto the show. Tonight, we're joined by Bill O'Reilly, host of the highest rated show in cable news for many years running, The O'Reilly Factor. Mr. O'Reilly, thanks for joining us. Yeah, The Friend Zone. It's kind of like the Twilight Zone. You look a it's... little like Serling, Rod Serling, you know, when he was <laughs> a younger Rod guy. Serling. You just need the Thank cigarette, you. you know, traveling through another dimension. <laughs> All right, what's on your mind? And a thinner tie. So I've always wondered, how did you get into this business? You're the biggest guy in the business. What would, how did you get your start? Um, I was teaching high school in Opelika, Florida, the crack capital of the world. And uh, I liked teaching. But I knew I didn't want to do the rest of my life. So I went back to Boston University. I got a master's degree in broadcast journalism. And then I just worked my way up. I started in Scranton, Pennsylvania uh, with the real folks. And I think that's where I got my affinity for the regular folks. And I worked my way up and uh, worked hard and uh, did some uh, good things. And here I am. So did you, I mean, do you think it was worth getting the master's? Did you learn? No, I, I didn't learn anything at Boston University, but except I was on the school newspaper, the Daily yeah. Free Press, and that was a blast. Yeah, that, that was, was fabulous. So that alone, but the dopey professors, you know, I mean, you know, you know how it is. Yeah, However, I, I wouldn't discourage anybody from higher education. It does, it does help. Yeah. So how did you get from Scranton to fame and fortune? Well, I went to Dallas after Scranton. I was very aggressive. I know that's hard for people to believe. <laughs> very aggressive reporter. Kicked in a lot of doors, did a lot of investigations, and I just, you work your way up. People find out about you, so I went to Dallas, then I went to Denver, started my anchor career in Denver, then I went to Hartford, Connecticut, uh, where I was the main anchor, and then out of Hartford, I came down to New York. I made it back to New York City in five years. And then when you're uh, Channel oh. 2 in New York, that's the big gun. And from yeah. there, I went to the network news uh, and then syndication, Inside Edition, made that show a success. Uh, and people saw me there. And then when cable started, I got a show. So it's, it's hard work. It's persistence. You don't give up. You climb the ladder. So what, but was there a pivot point where you went from being just a local news reporter to someone others noticed? It was, it was Inside Edition because that was a big, big syndicated program. Yeah. And I remember leaving ABC News to take the job, and Peter Jennings said to me, you're crazy. What are you doing? Uh, you've been on World News Tonight a hundred times in two years. And I said, you know what, Peter? They're giving me a lot of money, and they're letting me cover any story in the world I want yeah. to cover. I had that in my contract. I could cover any story. So I went to Vietnam. I went to Australia. I was there. The Berlin Wall came down. I got an unbelievable amount of experience. The show became a hit. Um, people noticed that I could drive a show. And once that happens in the TV industry, then you get other opportunities. Do, do you ever miss teaching? Yeah, you know, I might go back to it when I retire, which could be next Thursday. Um, <laughs> uh, because it's a big I, question. I, you know, I know I know a lot of things, and and, and there are a lot of uh, young journalists who who would benefit from the knowledge that I have. And um, I enjoyed my high school teaching days a lot. I was the original Mr. Cotter. Remember Welcome Back, Cotter? I was before. Yeah, very well. Okay. No, I remember it. Yeah. Welcome back. That was me. Um, I didn't have the hair like Kaplan, but <laughs> I was the same attitude. I had the sweat hogs in the class. I had, it was a rough school, and I enjoyed getting through to those kids. But do you think you'd fit in now? I mean, a lot has changed since that era, and teachers are very sensitive, and yeah, they don't well, want to trigger I, I, anyone. How I'm would a sensitive you fit in? guy, as you know, and uh, <laughs> believe me, that. if I were back in a classroom, we would be retro-rocketed right back to 1972. <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm the same guy I was. So there would be no safe spaces at all in your classroom? None? Under the desk. Um, but if you're uh, standing or sitting, uh, you're in my eye zone, um, you take what comes. <laughs> That's so ominous. I love it. I am an ominous guy. You oh, know that. the best. Right. Bill O'Reilly, thank you very much. That was great. All right, Rod. Great to thanks see you. for having me in and uh, <laughs> the signpost up ahead.